Welcome to the August, what, what date is it? September 30th. September 30th. <laughs> um, Zach meeting. And um, this is the first meeting of our new fiscal year, <laughs> for lack of a better term. <laughs> um, so I am trying to pull up the agenda because I just lost it for a second there. OK. So um, today, well, John, will, John Coutinho will be in here shortly. Um, and Ted, um, who, is, um, who is the CONCOM rep, um, is not going to be able to attend tonight, but he will be here in the future. And, um, and other than that, we have one new member, Sundar. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate Thank the you. participation. <laughs> um, and um, I think, you know, probably the most important thing tonight is that we kind of refresh our memories about what we were doing, you know, the last time we met was August 5th, and uh, things were kind of slow over the summer, but then to, just to get going again for fall, and to understand our deadlines for a town meeting, um, for any amendments that we're proposing, and so on. Um, but, <clears throat> but the first order of business is, um, is electing new chair and vice chair for this year. So, John, if you could, you know, just call for nominations or however it's done. I uh, don't participate. I know, but you just can, I mean, because I shouldn't, because I'm... All right, I'm okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I would like to nominate Mary as chair once again. I think she's had one year, and she's just starting to get into the swing of things. Second. And I think it would be... Um, a back step if we took the position away from her. I'll second that. Thank you. I accept the nomination. Are there other nominations? Okay. Shall we vote? <laughs> Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> and vice chair, we should. Uh... I'd like to nominate John Catino as vice chair. And I, I do believe he will accept the nomination. Um, <clears throat> spoke to him a while ago about that. I would wait for him to Let's wait for him. do that. Okay, that sounds fine. I would like to discuss future meeting schedule because this, is, this meeting is in direct conflict with the Growth Study Committee, and John is on the Growth Study Committee. And um, I don't know if you have participation in that at all as well, or you might be called into it from time to time and possibly other members here um, would like to attend that from time to time to give input. So um, I did consult with um, the chair of the Growth Study Committee about what their schedule is. Um, they actually, during October, they have Tuesday meetings, and then no during November, they have Monday meetings, and, um, and December, they have Monday meetings. So we could, we could take Mondays during October and then um, try to switch to a different day of the week. I, I just wanted to see what uh, people's schedules are and what, what, you know, what we could work with. Any thoughts? Mondays work for me. Okay. Yeah. Do Thursdays work for people? I could make it work. You could make it work? Sure. I have a very flexible schedule. Okay. Yeah, you can make it work. Yes, Elise. Uh, Thursdays, I usually have eHop meetings in the evening. Okay, eHop meeting. Okay. Is that every week? Yeah, uh, we're sort of doing every other week right now. Maybe we could alternate it with that. Um, so let's let's um, schedule October meetings on Mondays because it does not seem to be in conflict from for that. That would be uh, not a not. Let's see. It's September 30th, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next next week is the planning board. Seventh. October 7th is the, the planning board. <coughs> so. And the 28th. Is that right, John? I just want to make sure that. So the next Mondays are the 7th, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th. The 28th and the 7th are planning board meetings. Okay. So we would do the 14th. Uh, it's Columbus Day. It doesn't Columbus. matter. Can we do? We can't do Columbus Day. No, it's all. Oh, it's, it's a holiday. Probably right. holiday. I know, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> we can do the 21st. Okay. 
I'm sorry, you said planning board was the 7th and the 28th? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we could do the 21st. the 21st. We can do the 21st. It is so hectic scheduling this. All of the meetings. <laughs> okay. Could anyone do the 17th, October 17th? No, that would be stupid. 21st and the 17th. Uh, October 21st. Or the 10th? October 10th, so that we don't have to go three weeks without a meeting? Mm -hmm. I, I do have the 10th. October 10th at 7? Um, okay, not here that night, but that's. Okay. Obviously, we need to check with Rhea and Ted, too. So let's put that tentative. October 10th, October 10th. And, um, yeah, and email them and John C as well. Okay, so seven tentative Zach meeting on October 10th. My son's name is Zach also, so this has always <laughs> been confusing for me. <laughs> it's not spelled Z-A-C, but still. <laughs> We could spell this Z A C H. Yeah. You know, you add the Hopkinton at the end. <laughs> that's right. Add Hopkinton. That's good. That's good. All right. Okay. And then the twenty-first. Right. Zach. So tenth and the twenty-first. The tenth and the twenty-first. Okay. So in general, it'll be every other week, except actually, if we switch to Thursdays. Um, um, you know, alternating with the EHOP meetings. If we switch to Thursdays, then we won't run into a bunch of Monday holidays anymore. So <laughs> that's a plus. <laughs> Considering the planning board always manages to uh, take over the spot if, uh, if we have to skip one for Monday. All right. We also will need to have a public forum um, as soon as we can, like probably, you know, in the next uh, month. In fact, we could schedule that for... Is it too soon to schedule it for October 21st, John? I don't know how long you need to advertise those. Um, I'd, I'd have to look if it's any different than a regular meeting, but if it's a regular meeting, then it shouldn't be right. No, I think, I think we usually advertise it for a little bit longer. I'll, I'll have to Just, check Yeah, but, but it seems to me that three weeks would be enough. Mm -hmm. okay. So does that sound good to everybody, mm -hmm. that we have our public forum on October 21st? Okay, good. Okay, and all meetings start at 7 p.m. And end absolutely by nine, but usually earlier. Hi, John. So John, we were just talking about um, making sure that these don't conflict with the growth study committee in the future. So, oh, good. And um, during October, all the growth study <coughs> committee meetings are Tuesdays. Yeah, so I was wrong about today. So that's okay. Yeah, and then, it wasn't um, today. And then but we- that one was today, so that was a paper. We are, um, we scheduled um, for October 21st as our public forum. Um, but also we tried, to, since October 14th is Columbus Day, um, we, we also scheduled for Thursday night, October 10th. Do you need him? You need? Oh, he's just being curious in public. Down. You can learn something. <laughs> you learn something about Hopkinton. <laughs> <laughs> so we also scheduled for Thursday, October 10th, so we didn't have to go three weeks before another meeting. Does okay. that work for you, this Thursday? I can make it work. It's fine. Okay. okay, sounds good. I'm going to do Nestor now. It's a little bit easier. And, um, and then Rhea and Ted, um, if you can confirm with them for both of those dates, that would be great. And then um, when the Growth Study Committee switches back to Monday meetings at the beginning of November, we are going to try to do Thursdays at 7, um, and we'll alternate it with the EHOP meetings because... Are you growth also? Who's, who else is on growth? It's growth Study, just me? Just you. 
Oh, sorry. But um, but then but then we won't have that conflict. So. No. Okay. All right. Um, we can go back to vice chair. <laughs> like to hear nominations for vice chair. I'd like to nominate John Coutinho for vice chair. Second? Sure. Can I hear other nominations? No other nominations? Okay. This is, the this is what happens to me. All in I'm favor? <laughs> Aye. Does he Aye. accept? Do you accept? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, do you accept? <laughs> well, who's chair? Yeah, we already oh, okay, voted. Okay, okay. I am. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't lead the agenda I, otherwise, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have the next few meetings scheduled, and we have a public forum scheduled. So you said the 10th and the 21st? Yep, 10th and the 21st. And we did not set any November meetings yet? No, we did not. Okay. But we will plan to set them on Thursdays at 7. Just um, for uh, scheduling purposes? Yep. Um, with EHOP, we're trying to do the first Thursday of the month is a set meeting, mm -hmm. and then... Our next meeting, we're having, we're trying to have someone from all the different committees in town come, so we kind of have to work around them. Oh yeah. So it might not always be on a Thursday; it might be on a Wednesday. Okay. But we're we're doing the first Thursday for sure. Okay. Well, then we will do the second Thursday definitely, <laughs> and then we'll do the second and fourth, and we'll um, just you know if you have to miss because you have both meetings going on at once. We'll just have to manage that, okay? Okay. Do you want us to schedule those now? Yeah, why don't we? The second since, and fourth. Since I was, uh, isn't, isn't the fourth <laughs> Thanksgiving? It is. Oh, God. Okay, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> yes. I seem to remember, I seem to remember there was a president there. So that, that, so they they get the fourth Sunday. And... <coughs> Excuse me. I'm fighting a cold. <laughs> okay, so the first thursday is seventh okay the second thursday is the 14th so that will be a meeting wait hold on wait a second you do see the first thursday no i'm first the first thursday is is elisa's meeting so we can't do that okay so no. the second thursday the 14th i have it's on wednesday in november seriously <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing's on a set schedule right now. So we could do first and third. Yeah. Yes, we could do first and third. All right. Let's do it. Okay, now it's going to be November 7th. <laughs> and, and I don't have my phone with me today. So I, can, I, can imagine, I can imagine what my kitchen sounds like right now. <laughs> November 7th is fine. <laughs> okay. The 7th and not the 14th. And you John, John will give us an email with all these dates listed out. So we can check our calendars and make sure they're accurate. Okay. 21st. And then the 28th is Thanksgiving. Okay. Good? The 21st. Okay, that's... Good, so we'll go from October 21st and then that's two weeks and a few to John, when's November homecoming? 7th. Mm -hmm. is, that the, is that the 21st weekend or the weekend after? Is, I'm sorry, what? Oh, so 7th oh, and 21st of November, right? Oh, no, the 7th and the 21st, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Okay. It's not gonna be that close to Thanksgiving. Okay. The 21st? It's just 21st of November or 21st? So 21st of November is a week. Oh, so, it's, oh, so we're 21st and the 21st. We're going to do two 21st. Correct. Okay. 20, oh. October, yeah, October 21st, 21st as well. That's yeah. correct. Okay. <laughs> so we have, we have October 10th. Yep. October 21st. Yep. November 7th. Yep. November 21st. Correct. We haven't booked any others than that, correct? That's it. I think that, that, that's, that's the most we've ever done in a row. <laughs> I think so. And October 21st will be the public forum, unless you find a reason that we need to do that later. Mm. All right. My 10th isn't given enough time? That's what I'm asking, is whether or not we have enough time on October 21st. I just want to make sure that we have enough Between time. Between now and October 21st. What, what will we uh, do on the 10th? Oh, I don't think the 10th is enough time. 
before oh, I don't the think public so. forum. Do you? Do you have people? I have a suggestion for the 10th. Why don't you redistribute all of Ted's stuff? Yes. On the solar farm? Yep. And why don't we take that up on the 10th? I think that's an excellent idea. I was looking at that on the work plan mm -hmm. um, in preparation for tonight, and I was realizing that, you know, we had looked at it on August 5th, but we didn't have, I don't think we had a quorum or we had almost, you know, we, we had a, a short number in, mm -hmm. nonetheless. And, and even though we looked at it, we could uh, definitely discuss it more. Okay, go ahead. So that's an excellent idea. Okay. All right, so um, John and Sundar, um, I want to make sure that you get um, a zoning bylaw book. Sure. From John. Okay. And um, a copy of the master plan. Sure. Um, I think the zoning bylaw book can be electronic as well as in, on paper, but the master plan, I don't know if you have that electronically or if it's just uh, on a paper book. Or... I might I have to look. Okay. And yeah, then I think it's on, it's on our website, so it's going to okay. be electronic. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So yeah, it, it's just useful to have a PDF of both of those sure. available for uh, um, light reading. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are there any other documents that are particularly helpful, especially for new members? The map. Oh yeah, zoning map. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's always a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so if you could get that, those two. Um, oh, and actually, um, John. Next time, if you could bring a full-size copy of the zoning map for Sundar, um, as well as you, as well as sending him the electronic one, but sometimes he can't even blow that up enough. Is that to the really Stephen Wright joke? I've got a full-size copy of the United States full-size full map of the United States, full scale, one-to-one right. <laughs> <laughs> -one scale. That's right. <laughs> I drive that. <laughs> okay, so um, those three things. Anything else that you can think of? Good. A good sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have that for sure. sure. That's good. It's always fun. Definitely need that. All right. Okay. Organization. All right. The um, the one pager that you guys received that has the, um, the information on the organization of Zach, I just wanted to quickly review it. Um, just so everybody is clear on it, I'm going to also send a PDF that will actually have <laughs> the, the little squares filled in. <laughs> but, um, but the way um, Zach was reorganized by the planning board um, in July 2018 was to make it a year-round committee. Prior to that, it was just a one, e a one year and actually more like six months. Um, and this is just to give it a sense of, of better continuity, um, things that we can tackle, you know, are, are longer term, more complex issues. Um, but um, the purpose is to review and develop proposals to amend the zoning bylaws and or the zoning map. And then we make recommendations to the planning board in preparation for annual town meetings. So, um, there's a deadline that we have for the point at which we need to um, forward everything to planning board. Planning board then has, holds public forums of their own to review the, um, the wording and any zoning changes that we're proposing. And then they vote on whether or not it goes to, to town meeting. And then town meeting votes on whether or not it's implemented. So, um, so what are the deadlines involved, John, just to review? The other job, sorry. Um, I am, I do not have the information. Okay. Yeah, it's, 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 it's somewhere Approximately somewhere February. January, February. Yeah, February is like the drop, drop dead, drop dead yeah. date. Yeah, we I can find out. Well, I think that, I think, well, you know better, the planning board like that we released them. Um, Piecemeal, um, yeah, that's actually the idea is that any that we voted on, mm -hmm. you know, pr uh, uh, since the, since the, since the deadline was passed last year. Any that we vote on, we can send on to planning board right away and they can potentially put that on their agenda sooner. They may not, but we'll see. Do we have any that were close? Do you remember, Carol? You're good, you're good at this stuff. You still have a pretty good memory. <laughs> <laughs> were there any that were close? I think close? your memory is shot <laughs> if you're thinking that. <laughs> what, any, any that were close yeah, to voting wise? That, that, any, you know, any of the, the ones we were still talking about in April? I think we, get in. I think we so might have the planning board kicked back to us. We might have some. 
So I'm, I'm referring to our work program. We had a couple that planning board program. opted not to follow through on. Yeah. So if you look at the work program, which is the landscape document. Okay, I know we, on signage, we had a consensus that no, no bylaw change was needed. Um, theaters, halls, and clubs by right, not, uh, consensus was not to propose the bylaw change. at streamlining again? <laughs> okay. Well, starting at the top, because we need to review these anyhow. Um, parking requirements in various districts. Um, in June, we decided to hold off on any zoning changes until the new public parking in the downtown is built and the downtown corridor project is completed. Anybody feel like this should come back up again this year or we should just leave it in the gray zone? Even though parking was passed at town meeting, there's no funding to actually build any parking downtown. Right. So we so we we bought some land, and um, that still has a home on it. That still has to go through a demo delay. Then they still we still have to put away money to get the to get it built, and then permit it. That's was why I mentioned number three. Because I, I just I'm just doing a, a, a simple thing through ZBA and it's and it's it's four months is what is what we put away to do that, and mine's a this it's one condition, mm -hmm. you know this is going to probably be tons yeah. for the town and this is a town on town thing so I don't. So can you give us an update on what's happening with Main Street? Down to a quarter, the whole thing? Because mm -hmm. um, that, that impacts my decision. Because that's going to impact the parking on Main Street if you do that, and, and the whole timing of that, and what that's going to do to our entire downtown situation. Yeah. So, so I don't we, know where that's at right now. Pardon me? I don't know where that's at right now. If you could maybe enlighten us. As to what part of the downtown, it, 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 it's, it's happening, it, it's the, the it shovels go in the ground, as far as I know, the day after the marathon. 2020. 2020. 2020. Okay. And uh, the plan is what we were discussing at last Tuesday's meeting. I, I can't, I, I, I definitely not, uh, it's beyond my pay grade to discuss the entire length of the whole thing that was when we bring in the um, the engineers and everything else but it, it's going to happen next april and i've got a presentation that was <coughs> that was forwarded to the planning board that i can forward to all of you it's probably just what you got at the select board um so you know that's just for information then given that that's going to start um in 2020 and we're gonna lose parking spaces on Main Street when that happens, and that the parking that we voted on that's not necessarily happening, I think maybe we do wanna look at parking. Maybe not as a top priority, but I, mm -hmm. I well, think- Well, parking we should always be looking at anyway. It's for every community that it's one of the, it's one of the main stays of, of, of keeping an, a, uh, a vibrant downtown. You know, but, but you know, one of the one of the fallacies that we have to look at when it comes to parking here in here in Hamilton is we have a space that may that may be forty feet long, and then depending on who may be painting it, there could be three spaces there, two spaces there, or five spaces. I thought those were all state regulated. This, well, that's what's happening now. Is after this after the downtown corridor project goes in, there will be state regulated spaces. Which uh, 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 what are they? Eighteen feet long, John? Do you know that one? Uh, I think they're about, about eight, eighteen feet. Like long. like if you go right across from Hopio, you know, mm -hmm. or, uh, there's there's a space that they tried to squeeze in around a fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. and I packed my doom buggy there, and my doom buggy is about nine and a half feet long. 
and it overhangs. <laughs> I just parked across the street in front of, in front of Pad Thai with my daughter's pickup truck, and I'm one and a half spaces. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so when people say, we're losing spaces, no, you're not changing the physical size of the street. You know, it's, they're, they're gonna make the spaces what is what normally there. So it might look like there's four spaces there, but when, if only two cars fit in those four spaces, there's two spaces. So that's what that, a lot of our downtown is, is, is that. And I just laugh about the one across my hop, I put the doom buggy there and it's, it's pretty funny. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not <clears throat> sure what we could do in terms of zoning to address the shortage of downtown. I mean, we need more parking spaces yes. off Main Street, not rezoning the downtown area. So, I mean, kind of putting off the zoning discussion until after this, at one level, still makes some sense because I don't, th I don't see any recommendations we're going to make from a zoning standpoint. It's going to alleviate the situation. That's, that's okay. going to create that, more parking spaces. That makes sense. We need and more we don't, parking. And we don't want to discourage business by increasing the requirements or... Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> right, then, they'll, then we'll have riots. <laughs> we'll fill those seats up pretty quickly. <laughs> what's, what's that doing? <laughs> okay, so Solar Farm Overlay District. Um, this was material that... Um, uh, Ted collected for our August 5th meeting, and I can re-forward that out, or John can, and <coughs> we can put this on the agenda for our next meeting on mm -hmm. the 7th. Um, he um, collected information on overlays that Wellesley and Weston have created, and um, we will need legal advice eventually but we can have our initial discussion. Streamlining the permitting process. This is something we did in the spring. Um, uh, planning board has implemented some changes to the way they run meetings, which uh, I believe are showing some improvements to um, the efficiency of getting through individual um, applications. Um, and I mean, I'm certainly we meet all of the state requirements and that sort of thing, but, um, and I know that John and other members of the professional staff are, um, you know, have, have always, but are continuing to encourage applicants to meet with them directly before they get to planning board at all, you know, so, so that they can really address a lot of the issues up front that are the typical things that planning board, you know, needs to see and want, um, so that so that they can come before planning board fewer times, you know, in a, in a row. So those things are being done definitely, but um, but this is something that you know we've left <coughs> on here, not an active um, investigation. But any thoughts on how priority how how high a priority this is for us? Maybe someone from the chamber, that would be Ron, yeah. <laughs> can speak to whether or not this is an issue. I, I personally don't know that it's an issue, so I would be okay leaving it sit on the back burner. But Ron I mean, can the, probably the, speak more. The fluently. chamber does hear often that it's very difficult to navigate the permitting process in town. Not, not necessarily the policies themselves, but just the logistics of, of getting through meeting to meeting to meeting in multiple different boards and the amount of the elapsed time of getting through them is our, an arduous process. It's not any one board necessarily, but it's, when, when, it's when this board has process. to continue it two or three or four times to get to the, to the beginning of the next board, it's, and, it, and it's hard because you go through the planning board and they send something to the CONCOM and then you got to wait for CONCOM to make their decision before it can come back and you can look at it again. Oh, but that's what, you know, it's, and I'm, I don't have a solution that I'm, that we're trying to recommend, but it is an impediment to people wanting to do business in Hoppington. 
Because some municipalities do joint meetings to get things through. They, they schedule stuff up so that the several, you know, if, if, if there are large projects happening, you know, we really don't have anything large going. But even as I said, just the, the, the you know, one thing that I have, um, now I have a, I just bought a, bought a house up the street and it's a 15,000 square foot lot, so, you know, I, I'm conforming. But remember, it's, I, I, you were on the board, I think, that when we tried to change the um, size, the, the conforming size lot for the downtown, it was about five years ago, I think. And um, because right now, it's somewhere about 70 to 80% of the lots downtown are non-conforming. So if you want to do, do anything to your house, you've got to go through CBA and get a special permit or a variance, depending on what you want to do. <clears throat> and um, what we were trying to do was to make make 70, 80, or 80 percent of the conforming, so reduce it from 15,000 square foot required lot down to I think we did seven or eight. I think Elaine did did a great job at bringing the number, but when we presented it, actually I I think presented it at town meeting. I think they did a bad job of, of trying to explain why we were doing this. A lot of people thought we were doing it so that. Um, it would make their houses uh, more susceptible to be bought up by, by retail or, or, or <coughs> commercial establishments and, and spread the, spread the, the uh, business community down, down through A, B, and C streets and everything. But in reality, all we were trying to do was keep people from having to spend the $250 for a special permit, the $400 to to um, to put the ad in the paper and the et cetera, et cetera. So so it may, may only come to a couple thousand dollars, but that's you know if you're only going to you know put a put a back deck on or do something else, that's probably <coughs> half the cost of the job. And I think that might be something you know, like this. You know when we're talking about the permitting process, this, uh, I, I'm I'm getting into a whole another one another thing, but it just reminded me of, reminded me of that one. Is that um, you know the, the everybody downtown could really use I think could use a hand. Or well, maybe I could just do a better job selling it. Or maybe somebody else sell it. And that ties in with the um, with some of the other things that you know we've reviewed in recent years um, regarding the um, accessory family dwelling units or conversions of of residential property into du duplexes and so on. That everything has to go through the ZBA, and if there are any of them that we can streamline potentially about not go, needing to go through ZBA if it, if it you know, meets these requirements, for instance, you know, um, that could speed up a lot of things, so. Downtown area. Just to confirm, 43D is not a solution that we are looking for here, right? Because that's not going to solve a general problem. Correct. More process issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to the next one. Encouraging senior citizens to stay in their homes. Um, yeah, was that, that was me, and that's not... Um, Is that to keep people from that's driving? That's not a zoning thing. Yeah. I think it's something that we should do in town. I think we should make it easier for seniors to stay in town. But I don't think that's a zoning issue. Yeah. I think that's a tax credit or, or some other method. And we are doing that stuff. We we did the the, uh, the water and sewer uh, relief, and we did uh, we got the additional um, uh, tax relief for the uh, homeowners tax and stuff. We've done a lot this year. Carol, did this mean uh, as against leaving town? Is that what you mean by are they leaving town? And when you say encourage people to stay in town, I mean, I think a lot of residents put their kids through school. Okay. And after their kids are through school, they immediately leave town because the taxes are too high That's for true. them to stay. And from my perspective, what I see that doing is it immediately brings in 2.3 new children to go to school, which in effect costs the town More. the same amount of money okay. again, okay. as opposed to me staying in my house. And okay. I, there's no cost associated from a town st standpoint with me being a town. <coughs> Kids are done, they're gone, I'm paying the taxes, but I'm not putting any more kids through school. And if I can't afford to stay here, then you're gonna get another 2.3 children in my house. And I'm not, I know Elaine had an issue when she was talking about her experience 
in Harvard. I'm not. I'm not talking about necessarily my staying here until my house is a total rundown shack, and somebody has to rip it down and rebuild it. But there, there should be a period that I stay in town to pay taxes to pay for my children's education, and that I don't know how you make that work. But I think it would be a good thing if, as a town, we could make it work. But as I said, I don't believe that's a zoning issue. And I don't think it's anything we're going to resolve in zoning, so I don't think necessarily it should be on this list. So I get off my soapbox now. Okay, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I will um, put it in gray so it stays on our list, but it goes to the bottom. <laughs> okay. Okay, this next one definitions of zoning districts and creating table for zoning. That's, you know, my pet project. Um, and it's just an organization of information that I'll talk over with John at some point in the in the coming months. How about adding the word residential to agricultural? <laughs> that's that's a bad joke. <laughs> Dark sky lighting standards. This is this is one we didn't even touch last year, um, but l the year before and probably a lot previous to that. Oh, every year. That's, that's, that's an every year one. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is um, one thing that we were just trying to educate ourselves about. Ted had mentioned a field trip a few years back that um, had been done with, you know, somebody knowledgeable in the field of, of lighting and, you know, with light meters and kind of just letting us all know what it means to, you know, what spillover, how much spillover there is and things like that. So, um, so that is something that we'll continue to pursue. It's on our action item list. Um, and, and we'll just bring it up, you know, when, when Ted is in the room and, <laughs> um, the, there are certainly a lot of lighting standards that the DB, the, yeah, DBA, is that right? Design review, DRB, there. DRB re, um, goes through with larger developments quite a lot. So um, I think that a lot of that is covered. There's not a, a screaming need for new zoning regulations, um, but it's probably something that we can consider for the future. And I expect anybody with any other comments would just jump in, right? <laughs> Um, consolidate accessory family dwelling unit, conversions of residential property, and the duplex bylaws. Um, the purpose of this would be really just clarification because these three, three or four different bylaws which have developed through time um, are very similar. And um, John C., you could probably speak to that because you know you've you you are in this industry. But um, I I think it can be confusing for people. Like which one applies to me and what what do I do with this? And um, it would be um, again a nice thing to have. I don't think it would. Well, one, basically, one's an apartment. One's an in, the way I the way I'm, I read it is one's an apartment, one's an in-law, and one's a separately owned building. So you can have. That's true. Duplex, duplexes. Well, the, the thing is that, yeah. But there's overlap. There's a lot of overlap mm -hmm. in the way that it's worded. So yeah. So just to, to try to streamline that and and make it clear, you know, what applies to what, and and also make it make it more clear for what the town intends, because I think that's been lost in the way that they've overlapped over the years, mm -hmm. with various changes. So. Yeah, I think that happens because you know a lot of times we try to. You know, make sure that we have enough affordable housing and all that, because we're running into that right now with the uh, yeah. with the stuff from Legacy and the stuff from uh, up in Chamberlain and Wayland, is making sure that that we have enough affordable units, and to try and to try and get an affordable unit here in Hopkinton's tough. Yeah. You know, like that comes back to Carol talking about the you know the taxes, you know, because the t the taxes really aren't going up high, but it's the valuations of the houses that are going up. That's true, but if you didn't need the tax revenue, then you could lower the rate to generate the income that you needed. There, there's nothing to say that if my, the value of my house doubles, that you need to double my taxes. You're doubling my taxes because you need the revenue to operate the town the way that you want to operate the town. 
No, the tax is not. Lower my rate, well, the tax my valuation only, could go up. Taxes have only been going up two and a half percent or less than two and a half percent, which is why we had to do the underwrite. But 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 what they they um, you know they they sometimes change the algorithm sometimes, and and the houses are worth more than they. But from a homeowner's perspective, it doesn't matter if my taxes go from two thousand to three thousand or six thousand to eight thousand. It doesn't matter how you got to the eight thousand from the six thousand. Oh, sure it it just matters that it. Uh, no, because no, your house is no, because because Hopkinton's such a great place to live that that when one goes to sell their house, it's worth a lot of more, a lot more money rather than. But if I don't want to sell my house and I want to stay in town, it makes no difference to me how you went from six thousand dollars in real estate taxes to eight thousand dollars in real estate taxes. Me, as the homeowner, now has to pay. The eight thousand dollars worth of tax is not the six thousand. Doesn't matter whether or not you increase my rate or my value. The fact is, my bill went from six thousand to eight thousand. Mm -hmm. That's the financial hardship, not no, no, not no, the I, fact that twenty years or two years or whatever down the road, I'll be able to sell my house for more than I bought it for. It's right now I need to pay the increase in real estate taxes. That, you understand? No, no, I get what you're saying. No, I get what you're saying. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fine. And that goes back to the senior incentives. So, right. you know. Yeah, because I'm getting old. It's clear. Yeah, that's <laughs> <you're> right. <clears throat> Number eight um, is a carryover from ZBA request two years ago about revising the accessory family dwelling unit bylaw to make uh, a few more things. Um, by right rather than having to all go through ZBA for a permit. Um, we, uh, there was wording that did not pass that year in town meeting and we can review that wording and see whether or not there's any appropriate wording that we feel would pass, you know, to reintroduce it if we, if we want to do that. That might be worth bringing back for the next meeting too. Yeah, because it could be a quick one. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Quick and it's available. scare me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, so I, I went back to the 2018 to a town meeting minutes and I saw they were trying to replace the whole thing with the new text. It was not one section, it was a whole thing being replaced. And from the arguments that I saw against it, there was only arguments about changing wording. I still don't know why it didn't go through. So maybe getting more information about why it was stopped, actual reason and why it was stopped. Do you have that information that it would be easily I, I'll, distributable? I'll get it from back from the 2018 town minutes, whatever I gathered, I'll get it, but I don't think it was enough. I think we need more information about it. I can bring forward the That's something we should do. Good uh, idea. Watch uh, some of the town meeting. Watch, you know, let's go back. Maybe that could help us with, with some yeah, of these. Yeah, no, that's not a bad idea, but I like it. just sounds awful. <laughs> I know, but, but we could we could we could speed it up. We could speed it up and stuff. We could. <laughs> That's right. Just... Put it on two X. Um, <laughs> um, I actually have some notes from that town okay. meeting that might supplement, you know, what what's in the official minutes. Okay. So, okay. <clears throat> but they're not here right now. <laughs> no, no, no for the next, next meeting. Time. Yeah, I don't have to do the whatever I gathered also. So, okay. Okay, number nine, we crossed off our list. Um, 10, protect large tracts of open space. This was, uh, let's see, this is the chapter 61. <laughs> and I know there's A, B, and C of that, but I don't know what the different ones are. Um, don't tell me right now. <laughs> so this is more about, um, you know, really looking far, farther to the future, making sure that we have open lines of communication with um, certain um, landowners and and involving the Open Space Preservation Committee and the CPC Fund and making sure that we, we are all in communication about um, those large parcels and um, the, the desire to protect open space, you know, if, if things, you know, come up for sale. So, so that the town doesn't get caught off guard. The um, seminar or presentation that you and I and a couple of others went to, there was a, the town planner from Framingham was talking about approaching homeowners about putting voluntary constri uh, conservation restrictions on their properties. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know how that works? Like, are there tax incentives? For, like, what would, do you know anything about that? So owners can put conservation restrictions and I guess there's a, an array of what the restrictions can include on their property. Mm -hmm. um, usually they're purchased. So the town will purchase the conservation restriction because that landowner can no longer use that portion of their land for development. So they're okay. losing value of the land or they can donate a conservation restriction. You see that a lot with the open space uh, landscape preservation. Uh, projects going mm -hmm. to the planning board is the open space will be deeded over or have a conservation restriction put on it. Right. The the um, planner from Framingham, whose name I don't remember, she was talking about approaching homeowners in existing like large parcel yep. properties and having them put a conservation restriction on a portion of their property. And I I don't know what. The motivation is for the homeowner to do that. Yeah, you would, would that mean they would declare part of their property conservation, like declare, like self declare it and yes, sort of, oh, okay. And they so put a conservation it's an actual, restriction. It's on. an actual restriction, like deeded restriction, that no development can go. Right. And it can be written a certain way so that no development. But but to your point, that would be the equivalent of me giving away the property to the right. town in some sense, right? But then, if they sold the property, that parcel can't would be developed. stay undeveloped. Okay, Correct. so it deters people from when the land is being sold, not necessarily when they're still living there. Right. I would assume there's some kind of tax reduction in the value of the land because it's undevelopable. It would be a conservation, it would be open space essentially. I, I would be happy in the next couple of months to go and make an appointment with the, the Framingham um, town planner that was at that meeting okay. to talk to her about how, how the town gets the people to do that. Mm -hmm because there's, there's a number of large properties in Hopkinton that, that could be divided. And I don't, I don't know how they broach that subject, but I think it's something Definitely. worth pursuing. Okay, sounds good. If you all agree with that. I think it's a good idea. I just see the, that if somebody's owned a property for 50, 100 years, it's come down the family, and now that, and for the last 50, 100 years, they've been paying, but we'll just talk about the high tax on it, that, you know, they've been looking forward to retirement and taking care of their kids by, by selling it, that they put a deed restriction on it that brings the value down to just a single home. I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. and that's, There'll be a very generous, anybody that does it's very generous to the town. Listening to the planner right. from Framingham, it's it's been successful for them, and I don't, because I understand your argument, it's like, yeah. and why I don't understand why would anybody do that, right. but right. Right. let's find out why yeah. anybody get a, so, <laughs> get a, If I can weigh in, I, yeah. I've seen this in other towns. Usually, they'll use the town will use CPA funding for open space to purchase the restriction from the landowner. Okay. That's how you offset that. Okay. So that's what I meant by the town purchases the CR. Is they're basically saying, going to a landowner and saying, we'd like to buy this portion of land. We think it's significant for open space. We'll give you this amount, or you tell us how much, and then they work in negotiation. But are they selling the land, no, or are they selling just selling the restriction. the restriction? So they still own the land to they use as the they land. want, so well, to use within yeah. the restrictions. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes the town can negotiate a lower price by saying, in the future, when you die or sell this land, sell us that conservation restriction at that point, so you can use this land. Or, or there's some language in the restriction where it's on when they own the land, but they can still do some stuff that's not necessarily development, but they can do stuff to enjoy their land. But then once the land is passed to whoever <coughs> else, or is sold or whatever, the, the, the full force of the restriction goes into effect, and then there's. Okay. It's basically just open space. So you'll, you'll see towns use open space funding through like CPA or if there's a funding in the open space preservation committee uh, account or something like that, that's usually how they do that. Now that's a great use of those funds. That's exactly what they should But I still think for. the additional research would be a good idea just okay. to, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Then I could see somebody doing it because yeah. they've, been waiting for, they've been waiting for this, this pay out for years and years and years. Well, I will, I will put it on my calendar to, to go and, and meet with her in the next couple of... Well, I'm going to put you on the action item list. Was mm -hmm. it? 
Was it Erica John? Don't I'm going to have to, do you know? I'll check my notes. Because I, I know notes. there's been some movement. If it was other planners, they may have left framing it. Oh. So you may not be able to find it. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Well, but I'll you, report back when I'm If you find out, I'm, I actually have a conference in like three weeks. Okay, oh, nice. Planner, so you can tell me and I can try <clears> to <throat> Oh, excellent. Okay. I'll look back through my notes. I'm sure Mary has much better notes, but <laughs> between the two of us, hopefully we'll get, you, get your name. Hours of business operation we reviewed in June. Surprisingly found very few things in any bylaws, general bylaws or zoning bylaws. And um, I don't know if there's any desire to revisit this and put it into zoning bylaws. It seems to me that the, the marketplace is kind of determining hours of operations reasonably well. Yeah, I'm with you there. Anyone else? I know, yeah, try and, try and go to a restaurant or something after 9 o'clock in Hopkinton. <laughs> I know. Actually, I wish we, we could, but but again, if the restaurants don't wish to be open that that much later, then so be it. <coughs> Stone walls. Um, this is not a zoning, but it's something that the planning board has requested. So it's really just to write some guidelines that they might put into their scenic road site plan review and things like that. <clears throat> so, um, again, you know, if anybody comes up with some um, extra time on the weekend and you want to write some, <laughs> some thoughts down, we'll review it here before we pass it on to planning board and say, here's some suggestions. I actually think the planning board did a relatively good job with that, with one of their most recent stone walls when I was paying attention, where they asked for, you know, photographs before and... Yeah, I remember photographs meeting. after. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to use like stone tools we just or something ever, to move the rocks. So, so review. So I could review that that uh, meeting and just like write down what was said. And see if we can put yeah, it into some sort of ancient tools document. <laughs> Is this specific to homes on scenic roads? It's yeah. The the um, scenic roads um, with stone walls. There's there's something that says um, you know people have to come before planning board if they want to move remove modify in any way um, the stone wall the stone wall has to be in the right of way you know of the scenic road and um, and planning board generally has um, I don't know four or five of these a year people okay. homeowners that come before them that, that need to either do some construction and so temporarily move the stone wall and then put it back and so things like that. Um, it's and considered historic. Yeah, it's historic. No, no, no. What is, what's the, what's the definition of historic, a historic stone wall? Oh, um, it, well. Older than me. I don't, I don't know it's, if they specify historic. Yeah, stone this, this was just my wording. I don't think it needs to be In historic. It's, just, it's not historic. It's historic just, stone walls. It's just, just there. <laughs> so even, even if I built one, Six months ago, well, you would build one in the right of way, which probably wouldn't be allowed. Oh, okay. No, oh, oh, this is strictly in the right, in of, the way. right of way of scenic roads only. only of scenic roads. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is like like a stone wall that's on somebody's somebody's you know uh, backyard or something. Yeah. Like oh, okay. Because I just want to because you know when you when you when you're driving along the highways and stuff, and it, you know four ninety five, you see them there. They're going up and down a hill yeah. and stuff. It's like, wow, I wonder what that was like. You know, I know, that's so cool. I know. When, when you find it in the middle of a forest, and it's like, well, this clearly was not a forest. All yeah. it was fields. <laughs> and that's cool. <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, we don't have any rights to okay, dictate so anything so other than right scenic road right of way. Okay. Scenic road. So. I don't know if it was like a 60-year-old, 80-year-old, you know, it's sort of like what we were doing. No, because we can't really carbon date the stones, so. Oh, the time it is that yeah. the person built. Yeah. Okay. Um, skipping down to 15. By the way, I'm going to probably uh, say we're going to end at the end of this page on 17, and then we'll go through the rest of them on the 7th to review where we're at because um, because my voice is failing and I'm, okay. I'm you know the 10th. Not the, the 10th. The 10th. <laughs> Sorry. I know somebody would use that and come here on the 7th. Um, okay. 
And blame you. Yeah, and blame me. <laughs> Increase retail store square foot maximum. This was a carryover from um, some some early ones we had last year. Last year? Last year. The beginning of last year from Chamber. Um, currently in the Industrial A and Industrial B districts, there's a maximum of 2,000 square feet for retail stores. And we did discuss that, but tabled it because we uh, we felt like we needed more information about well, just you know how much how much does a typical you know what kind of store how much typically does it need and you know, that sort of thing. So the idea here was <clears throat> to um, to increase the maximum square footage that was um, possible either by right or by special permit. I can't remember right offhand, but. And I do think we should revisit this. Any other thoughts on that? <clears throat> is, is there any demand for it? Well, there, there, we, I, I think that the chamber was looking to try and see if this helped yeah. you know, with, the, with the open spaces. And it's, a lot of it comes down to South Street and seeing if this sparks any interest. And, and in my mind, you know, we can't wait until there's demand for it to change the zoning bylaw because it takes two years to change the zoning bylaw. Yeah. The idea of a larger square footage would give us an opportunity to attract more national retailers that would want to come in as opposed to a local entrepreneur. I mean, we've got, there's, there's, there is open space now for retail that isn't filled yet but bigger spaces might attract a different thing, but okay. it's still 5,000, still small, 2,000 is tiny. 2,000 is tiny, yeah. And is this specifically on that South Street area? Industrial A and Industrial B is, um, actually, if you could get out the map. Industrial A is South Street. So, it's um, the pink area oh, okay. here. Okay. Um, and industrial B is the purple, okay. not that purple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <It's yeah>. purple. <laughs> so that's the other side of 495, sure. but uh, but close to 495. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we will we will take this one up, but I do think that we need to do a little bit of research ahead of time. So we need to talk about what kind of things we need to have an intelligent discussion about this topic. Um, I feel like in, the, in our previous discussions, we didn't have enough background information because we were, we were going back and forth a lot about just people's opinions. And as we discussed last year, this isn't all about our opinions. So, I mean, a lot of it's about our opinions, but <laughs> it's really nice to have some actual data <laughs> to support our opinions. Mobile vendors. Okay. Um, John, you were going to verify with Select Board whether or not this is something that Zach should address or whether... Um, I, I put it down to ask for it as an agenda item and it still hasn't come up. But, okay. Uh, we, we, we have That's a fine. meeting coming up next week, so I'll put it down to ask if we can... That is just fine. I'll leave it, leave it there. So we're, we won't address it until we get, clarific we get clarification from select. Is mobile vendors food trucks? Mobile vendors, food trucks, yeah, and other types of okay. vendors that, that sell from a truck on the street or something okay. like that. Okay. Mobile pet care. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's... All that I can think of is food, sorry. Your cat. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. I've never seen that, but sure. I'll go with that. Whatever, <laughs> Hot dogs and food trucks are the only thing that, that's come to mind. Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> um, wireless communications bylaw. This is something that we got through you from Elaine, something about it needs to be updated to reflect changes to federal laws. So this, this again, we just need to get the information um, from, from Elaine and see what needs to be done. Um, so it's just, you know, to me, it's an administrative thing, you know. Yeah, so. those are great. Those get right through. Yeah. Planning. So if we can get that, that's a that's a quick get that right to the planning board. Fruit. So I talked to Elaine about that, and I talked to Chuck Cadlick, the director of municipal inspections, zoning enforcement officer. Um, 
kind of gotten tabled for the moment because okay. I've been doing other stuff, but I do have it on my uh, okay. schedule and got all the documents and stuff to look into that. Okay, that sounds great. Um, okay, then I am going to ask that we adjourn for tonight because um, I just need to get this over this cold. And, um, and if I talk anymore, it's not going to be a good thing. <laughs> so so. Be before we do that, can I just um, make sure I'm clear? We're going to take up Ted's information on Solar Farm, yep. Overlay District next time, along with... Um, we're going to look at the family dwelling unit bylaw and why that didn't go through in 2018. Yes. yes. And address that. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Okay. And I, I can resend the solar overlay information right away, you know, like tomorrow, so people can start looking at it if they wish to. Um, and I'll look over my notes. See if I can supplement what you've found, Madhu. I'm sorry, you said it was about the accessory dwelling units mm -hmm. as well? Number eight, yes. Accessory. Anything else? Did you want to talk about the, um, I don't think they could sign up anymore, but the residential sprinkler demonstration? Oh, yes. Um, so October 2nd, two days from now, um, there will be a public safety demonstration of the sprinkler systems and, um, you know, talking about that. So <clears throat> this has come up, residential sprinklers um, <clears throat> for, for developments that have, like, really long, winding, one-way streets and things like that. Um, and until I met with the fire chief on this um, a few months ago, uh, I didn't even realize this, but um, <clears throat> this really affects homeowners uh, buying these properties, you know, that, that have been developed, and their, their fire insurance rates. It's oh. a huge, a huge effect on something like that, you know. So, um, so it's not, it, it's, it's a public safety, but it's also an economic issue for people moving into town or, you know, new, new developments. And, um, and planning board has already negotiated for several several developments where um, the developer is going to put in sprinklers. Yeah, legacy is 100. Yeah. percent Oh, is it? That's yeah. great. And so, um, so yeah. So even just you know, this past year, we've negotiated um, for a couple of other places that'll have sprinklers in the houses. So <clears throat> there's a demonstration six o'clock. That's right, six o'clock at the laborers training camp. And Madhu and I are going, Muriel is going, anyone else who wants to join, I'm sure I've they're got, not going to uh, throw you away. I've got Upper Charles, we're also doing a public information thing at the library. Yes, Jane okay. said that. Yeah, yeah so, so I'm, 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 I'm torn again that night. Yeah. Upper Charles, uh, the trail? Upper Charles trails, yeah. Upper Charles. Are we extending that into Hopkinton? Oh, Sorry, I didn't so. want to start something. Let's hope so. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. One can hope. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so today, from what you sent out, is the last day to sign up. Yes. But I honestly kind of don't believe they'll turn you away at the door if you haven't RSVP. So. But you can run home and RSVP if you'd like yeah. to go. <laughs> okay. That's true. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And John, you're going to come too. Right. So, with your permission, Madam Chair, motion to adjourn. Second. Great. Thank you. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Obsession? Okay. <laughs> Thank you.